morning it is filled to the brim and it is saturday june 6 and this morning the lord spoke to my heart very clearly and he said make peace your battle cry peace is your battle cry you know the truth is about life and our journey of life is that battles come and a lot of times we they come unexpectedly we we're going on our merry way and all of a sudden a battle is raging a storm is happening and the first thing that leaves us is our peace it's easy to let go of peace and be swirled and consumed by the battle and we become blinded to God's presence in our life we become blinded to the vision for our life the purpose for our life because this battle has co so consumed us consumed us in our body mind soul and spirit and the Lord is saying when you face those battles even when they sideswipe you and come unexpectedly declare make peace your battle cry a battle cry is the declaration that an army makes before they go out to fight the enemy they declare something and peace is to be your declaration because the greatest uh, enemy to the devil is the peace of god why because he is our peace see peace is not a feeling it is a person and God is our peace. Ephesians 2.14 says that Jesus himself is our peace. Jesus is our peace. Peace is a person. It's not just a feeling. We can have peace and calm. But the truth is this. Jesus is our peace. God is our peace. The name Jehovah Shalom means God is peace. God is peace. The name Jehovah Shalom came from the story in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 6, at the story of Gideon. Now, Israel is being harassed, is being persecuted, is being dominated by the Midianites and the Amalekites. They, these two enemies merged together to fight or to harass, to steal from Israel. So Israel's becoming greatly impoverished by the enemy, fearful to face the enemy, and finally they've had enough and they've called out to God, and God is answering by calling Gideon, Gideon, a young man. And the fact is this, Gideon is afraid at first to take on the call of God. But God says to him, Gideon, you are a brave man. You are a brave man. And then in Judges 6.23, the Lord says to him, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there and named it, The Lord is Peace. See, Gideon was afraid of the battle. The Lord said to him, the Lord declared to him who he was. You are a brave man. Do not fear the battle. I am your peace. The Lord is peace. Do not deny your battle. Do not ignore your battle. The Lord says you should be brave in your battle. I am your peace. Because he is your peace, you can be brave in battle. You have union with him. See, when we uh, embrace the Lord, we have union with him. And he is our peace. We are in union. He is peace. Therefore, he is our peace. So we can face our battle in peace and not put up with the compromise of harassment, the compromise of the enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy everything or the joy of life. See, fear will prevent you from facing your battle. Fear will erode your peace. That's why it's important to not let the spirit of fear come in because fear is the enemy of the victory that the Lord wants to give you. And that's why he declares to you today in your battle that you may be facing that you are brave and I am your peace. Another story, Jesus. We all know the story about Jesus in the boat. 
Matthew 8, 24 through 27. And suddenly a violent storm arose on the sea so that the boat was being covered by the waves. But Jesus was sleeping and the disciples went and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to die. He said to them, why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was at once a great and wonderful calm, a perfect peacefulness. Jesus was already there. He was in their boat. Yes, they experienced a sudden storm, a sudden battle. Their response was a lack of faith. They forgot or they they forgot that the person who is peace, the one who had created uh, and done miracles even in their midst and healings in their midst, he was right there in their boat. And what was their response to the storm was that I'm going to die. The one who breathes life, they're afraid that they're going to die. And they're dwelling with the very one who is peace. And Jesus rebukes their lack of faith. Their lack of faith because he is peace. He brought peace to their storm. See, fear produces a lack of faith in what God can do in our battles, in our storms. So it is important for you to to not have a spirit of fear, but rather say, Lord, I believe, I believe, even in the midst of your battle, say, I receive your peace because you are my peace right in the midst of this battle, right in the midst of this storm. What was created was perfect peacefulness over this storm. And the disciples learned a great thing. Jesus is our peace. Listen, the enemy wants to stir fear in your mind. He wa- That's what he wants to do because then that's a porthole for him to play around with you and erode your faith. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but it has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. That fear is an enemy to your peace. May your battle cry as you face your storms and battles be peace. Declare peace because God is with you. He is our peace. He is with you in your battle. He's going to bring you victory. The shalom of God is all about victory. It's all about prosperity. It's all about unity. It's about wholeness. God is with you. Do not fear. Do not shrink back. Declare As you go into your battle, you are a brave person. He is with you. He loves you. He will bring victory into your life. God bless you. I love you. Think about this word.